moving from a sedentary to a physically active societal way of life. This is Up On Our Feet. Welcome to Up On Our Feet. This is the second of a two-part mini-series on how the body and brain are integrated. For the first part, we looked at this integration from the perspective of physical activity. And for this second part, we're here to examine the integration of the body and brain from the perspective of nutrition or diet. And just as with part one, here with us again for the second part of the two-part series is Professor Fernando Gomez Pena, who heads up the NeuroLife Laboratory in the Department of Neurosurgery and Department of Integrative Biology and Physiology at UCLA, the University of California at Los Angeles. The lab's stated mission is to, quote, harness the power and diet of exercise, harness the power of diet and exercise to prevent or cure neurological and psychiatric disorders. Basically, Professor Gomez Pena's research involves the study of how exercise and diet impact both our bodies and our brains in an integrated manner. Professor Gomez Pena is also a member of the American Sports Institute's International Board of Advisors. Professor Gomez Pena, it's nice to have you back with us. Hey, it's very nice to be here again, and thank you very much for, uh, for inviting me again. Okay, sure. All right, let's start off and get right into it here. What types of food are considered good or healthy, and what do they do for both the body and the brain? Yeah, it, there are a, a whole range of foods that are considered healthy, and, and, and today we know um, pretty much uh, about this uh, that has been studied for the last 10, 15 years already in terms of what kind of foods uh, can help the brain. And um, in, in a few words, uh, I would summarize this. Uh, these are foods uh, that they have a high uh, nutrient capacity uh, and at the same time, uh, low caloric contents. Uh, too many calories are uh, bad for uh, the body and brain. And also, uh, we, I mean, people have the tendency to eat uh, empty calories, isn't it, in terms of the uh, low uh, nutrient capacity. And we can discuss, isn't it, the, these components uh, which are uh, important. And I can tell you. The, there is a whole range of foods, uh, particularly uh, natural foods uh, like uh, vegetables and meats the, 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 that they comply with the requirements that I, I told you. And, the, and also uh, another generality of this uh, is integration and combination of several type of foods, isn't it? Not eating only one, uh, having a, a whole variety of vegetables and, and meats, uh, and also at the same time, uh, trying to have a, a, a low caloric contents. Uh, another issue which is also important, uh, and we are learning, <clears throat> uh, scientifically in the last few years. Uh, however, several cultures have known this uh, when to eat. Actually, it's very important, isn't it? That the, um, uh, it's not the same if we eat certain type of food in the morning or we eat uh, the, this type of food uh, just before going to bed. And, and, and that's something uh, very important, which is a sort of uh, have to do with the circadian clock. Uh, as you know, isn't it? We have a clock in the body and brain, the cells have a, is the, the clock. And, and in the way that the foods are metabolized, uh, it's different uh, depending on the, on the time of the day. And in terms of 
building uh, storage capacity or being splitted or, uh, but as I said, uh, for us uh, in the Western society, something new, but does had been known for other uh, societies, for example, Asian culture, like uh, in China or Japan, uh, people tend to eat uh, the main meal uh, in the morning, isn't it, and, the, and less uh, in the evening. So anyway, so essentially, um, these uh, components are uh, perhaps the, the most important and also in the way that uh, we can combine this with activity because one thing is food, uh, but the, we have learned also in the last few years that the combination of exercise and food uh, is very important because of the, the um, exercise uh, works as a, as, as a modulator of the action of, of food, isn't it, in terms of burning excess of calories or in many ways also um, in terms of the, the molecular mechanisms in the brain, somehow they are complementary. So the, and, and there are some studies uh, in which the, some of the molecular mechanisms activated by exercise uh, can act synergistically uh, to the action of food, isn't it can help uh, and also exercise uh, may reduce some of the deleterious effect of certain foods. So for example, uh, for people particularly eating high amount of calories um, the, or bad calories, I would say, uh, high in saturated fat or sugar, the exercise uh, seems to moderate the effects in terms of uh, sort of counteracting a little bit uh, the negative effects of these foods. So as you see, everything is uh, connected and, and I think that's the most interesting thing to keep in mind. Okay, so one, you said, it's not only what we're eating, but when we eat it. And two, when we're eating food, if we're physically active, there's an integration or a way in which the physical activity is impacting or modulating or acting as a mediator in some way regarding what we eat. How does this then all impact? We, we know it's impacting the body. How does all this? impact the brain if we're eating healthy, exercising, and the synergistic effect between the physical activity and the food impacts the brain. What, what happens to the brain through this integrative process? Yeah, uh, as, as I said, uh, we have been learning about this uh, in the last few years. So the, for example, uh, in my laboratory, uh, originally, we start working on exercise, the, the effect of exercise on the brain, and we describe uh, several molecular pathways uh, activated by exercise. So, for example, we found like a molecule uh, called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, was being activated by exercise. But, but later on, uh, it was quite surprising uh, when we start looking at the, the, the effect of food, the, some of the same pathways activated by exercise in the brain uh, could be also activated uh, by certain foods. So the, I mean, and several of these pathways has a lot to do uh, with um, the synaptic plasticity, uh, synaptic plasticity and synaptic uh, activity is perhaps one of the most uh, relevant um, processes in the brain because these are the basis for a, for a 
uh, intellectual function, uh, cognition, emotions, and and the <clears throat> so the fact that the that exercise and food uh, could be working on these mechanisms uh, and at the certain point uh, synergistically or uh, or just the opposite uh, was extremely interesting isn't it in terms of sort of elaborate some type of uh, theory uh, by which uh, several of these components uh, can act together uh, in order to affect the brain so the i mean we can discuss more each one that um, Okay, so positive things can happen to the brain, or uh, yeah, to the brain, if we're eating healthy food, if we're exercising, the food and the exercise integrate themselves in order to create these molecular mechanisms that you're talking about that then impact the brain, and that regarding, you said, the BDNFs, brain-derived neurotrophic factors, which nourishes the brain cells we have, but also creates new brain cells in, a, in, a, in our brain. So this is all in a positive way. What happens to the person, the, the brain of a person, when they're eating an unhealthy diet and they're not exercising? What's the impact on their brain? Yeah, that's a, that is a big impact. Uh, uh, as I said, each one of them uh, have its own effect by separate. Uh, but I can give you examples. Um, the, so in terms of diet, uh, some of them have been already characterized in terms of the, the how harmful can be the effects. Uh, for example, uh, we have a study uh, pretty much uh, the action of sugar, uh, particular sugar uh, fructose. So the, as you know, uh, fructose is one of the main sugar being used uh, these days uh, as, a, isn't it, uh, as an additive to many foods and desserts and, and this, uh, and also uh, as part of the high fructose uh, corn syrup. Uh, that uh, is very much a uh, part of every uh, sugary uh, food uh, that we consume these days. So uh, what we found, uh, like a high consumption of fructose uh, and also a consumption uh, for certain time, I, I would say uh, weeks or months, uh, can be deleterious for brain, so can reduce a lot of this, uh, uh, the functionality of these uh, molecular mechanisms uh, related to synaptic plasticity. Uh, also can elevate uh, levels of uh, oxidative stress in the brain, can promote uh, inflammation in the brain. Uh, and all of these are basic process that the, for a, many disorders in the brain. So the, and, uh, and, and, and this is a kind of interesting uh, uh, when we discuss uh, the details of this, um, because of the, for example, when uh, the, in our society, we switch to the consumption of fructose like 30 years ago. I mean, people were thinking uh, that could be very positive uh, because indeed uh, fructose is cheaper, uh, also is, is much sweeter than glucose and, and also uh, the short term effect of fructose uh, are, are not bad actually. Um, well, I mean, within one or two days, uh, the program start building up uh, in weeks or months, and the, and that has been uh, characterized uh, in terms of uh, development of diabetes, isn't it? And 
obesity and, and, and that's very well known these days, uh, diabetes has a component uh, and in the brain and uh, also diabetes is a very important risk factor uh, for Alzheimer's disease. For example, Alzheimer's disease is, a, as you know, um, is uh, affect very much uh, the cognitive aspect of the, of the brain. So the, so anyway, uh, that's the effect of the, of, of, of the sugars, isn't it? Uh, but as I said, uh, I am talking about high consumption and, and also chronic consumption of this. Uh, and, um, and the same thing has been found uh, by exercise, isn't it? The, the people uh, with sedentary lifestyle uh, uh, also is known that that is an important risk factor for uh, Alzheimer's disease and, and other uh, brain pathologies. So, so when you combine these two things, uh, make the, the situation uh, much worse, isn't it? The, the, um, and has been a, a very important issue uh, for the last two years. Uh, as you know, the, um, the, with all of this pandemic uh, that has affected everyone, of us, isn't it, the, the, the main risk factor for the people who die, isn't it? I mean, you know, some people can get COVID uh, and nothing happened and, and some people died uh, very quickly. And the, and, and, and the, and the people who, who have had uh, this uh, much more negative effects uh, to the virus have been people who eat it, eat pretty bad, isn't it? Uh, and, um, and unfortunately, um, there is also a socio-economical uh, component of this, uh, because it's known the, the <clears throat> uh, you may know the concept of health disparities, isn't it? The, the people who eat worse are people uh, who have poor education, uh, low socioeconomical status. So, I mean, and that's, uh, it's well known these days that uh, more than the 50% of the people who have been affected by COVID uh, have been people uh, uh, very much connected to these uh, health disparities, uh, uh, poor eating, uh, lack of exercise also because of the pandemic, isn't it? A lot of people have been lockdown in houses. Uh, now we are getting out, isn't it? But the, the um, uh, people reduce a, a lot of um, <clears throat> um, possibilities uh, to reduce uh, the effect of the pandemic, isn't it? For example, socialization and also is part of the equation, isn't it, as diet and exercise and uh, so anyway, uh, I am mentioning this uh, because uh, uh, I mean it's very important uh, to keep this in a context. Um, the I mean a lot of this uh, uh, problem uh, we need to look at the as a group, isn't it? Like uh, <clears throat> the when we put together uh, several of these components uh, when we are. Uh, most affected and, and, and unfortunately uh, we, uh, we have had this uh, very important uh, demonstration isn't it for the last two years. Mm. Okay, so you're saying that just as physical activity positively impacts both the body and brain, if we're eating healthy foods, the foods, we know healthy foods are good for the body, but you're saying healthy foods are also good for the brain. You're also saying if we're eating these unhealthy foods, talking about the uh, fructose and things like that, they negatively impact the body as we've known with the uh, uh, obesity, diabetes, things like that. 
but they also negatively impact the brain. When they negatively, these bad foods, these unhealthy foods negatively impact the brain, what are the symptoms? I know you talked about diabetes, but does is memory compromised? Is learning compromised? Just what are the symptoms if this person is constantly eating unhealthy foods and not, and in particular, not exercising? Yeah, the, this the, one of the main symptoms uh, that the people experience uh, is depression. Is one of them a, a psychological psychiatry disorders, isn't it? That the, uh, again, going back to the pandemic, uh, you know, that has been one of the main issues. Um, so the, those are the most immediate uh, effects, uh, psychological depression, anxiety, and, and all of this uh, is based on the type of molecular mechanism that we have been working, isn't it? Like inflammation, uh, uh, dysfunction in synaptic uh, communication in cells, uh, um, a high oxidative stress uh, in cells. So, the, um, so those are the most uh, immediate effects. And, and unfortunately, um, you know, people many times don't, they don't connect it directly. They just start feeling bad or feel depressed or, or uh, uh, many reasons. And at the same time, uh, when people have these symptoms, for example, depression, it's totally paradoxical that the people don't <laughs> don't want to do exercise because they, they don't have any, any energy, isn't it? You know, when you are depressed, I mean, we just want to be at home or watching TV. And, and the, so it's a, it's a vicious circle, isn't it? Because they affect a, a many a, a psychological well-being. And these are the, the, the short-term effects. And we, we are talking about the long-term effects. I mean, they are much more um, dramatic, isn't it? The, uh, because, uh, and that's very well known already for uh, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, the, the onset of Alzheimer's disease can be years, can be four years, uh, 10 years, isn't it? So we are sort of building up on this and, and, uh, and, and unfortunately, all of this is building up and, and people uh, start feeling older. I mean, much sooner, isn't it? They feel, and they said, oh, maybe I'm getting old and this, that's why. Uh, but anyway, um, it's, a, it's a whole uh, uh, range of, um, effects uh, that we have, isn't it, that they can be um, start building up uh, by poor uh, management of diet and, and exercise. Okay, so just like with exercise then, from what I understand you're saying, what we eat, if we're eating constantly eating unhealthy foods and, and over a prolonged, you know, over a prolonged period of time, not only does that negatively impact thinking, learning, memory, things like this, but it also has an impact on us regarding anxiety, regarding Alzheimer's, re regarding depression, is that right? Is, is that what you're saying here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's a, uh, and, and that's uh, are the most uh, uh, immediate effects. Uh, and there are many others. Uh, is, uh, just to name another one, uh, cancer. I mean, cancer uh, is, is horrible. Um, the, um, the, um, uh, and it's the same mechanisms, isn't it? Uh, cancer, uh, 
uh, we know these days uh, uh, a lot of the uh, basis uh, for cancer is uh, metabolic, isn't it? Is the is the um, because the cells uh, are not uh, performing energetically uh, in a proper way, and and that start affecting the immune system and and um and and it's uh, and just to make a connection uh, any oncologist uh, i mean i mean doctor working in cancer they would tell you that the the main risk factor for cancer for one thing is the diet but secondly is the psychology the psychological effects uh, when people give up uh, when people get depressed uh, when people uh, they just uh, don't want to continue fighting. And that is because of the same process, isn't it? And, and, the, and unfortunately, um, people don't think too much about this. Uh, and I've seen this directly. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, my wife passed away uh, last year of cancer and, and the, um, and she was struggling cancer for uh, more than 10 years. Uh, and she was in a group of eight other people with cancer and all of them died uh, within one year. Um, and she survived 10 years because uh, we started applying all of this. Uh, I mean, the activity, healthy eating, eating um, and I learned a lot about this. Um, uh, by working with her and, uh, and as I said, um, <clears throat> the, when we start thinking about the effect of this uh, foods or activity, uh, they are very important when we need it most, isn't it? The, when we uh, reach a stage uh, like people with cancer or Alzheimer's disease or, or any of these calamities, isn't it? That they are, can can happen. Okay, so this is all really interesting. You know, you're saying, from what I understand, the Alzheimer's, the depression, but even the cancer is related to exercise, what we're eating, and our attitude that we have all of this uh, with all this. So, so where is all this research going regarding? how the body and brain are integrated, especially regarding physical activity and, and uh, diet. What do you envision in the years ahead as more and more research is conducted on this? Yeah, I think uh, we are moving in, the, in that direction right now, but uh, uh, and according to the director of the NIH, uh, uh, this area is one of the top five uh, less known uh, in terms of science and, and also uh, how important can be uh, in order to cure diseases. Uh, however, um, you know, the study is, uh, is difficult uh, because uh, when we do science, um, the, I mean, there are many factors like people um, <clears throat> um, judge other scientists in terms of uh, many, uh, I would say, uh, weaknesses uh, that uh, unfortunately people have, we have it in the scientific world, isn't it? For example, uh, many grants uh, from the NIH, isn't it? Uh, in spite of how important can be in order to cure diseases, uh, are reviewed by scientists. And scientists, for example, uh, they score very heavily uh, in, in mechanisms, isn't it? Uh, in terms of a lot of this uh, sophistication in having a, a model, a, to look at this in a mechanistic way. And um, however, uh, when we are talking about the connection between brain and body, 
it's one of the most difficult um, aspects uh, to have mechanisms uh, because uh, I mean that's why we I mean it's very difficult to uh, connect uh, what happened in the stomach isn't it to what happened in the brain so we can have a, a lot of um, um, descriptive studies uh, that we know that they are right isn't it the but uh, but it's very difficult to isolate a mechanism that can put together everything. So, uh, and that's one of the things like uh, have delayed the development uh, in the field because, I mean, the, I mean, science is very tough in terms of uh, doing this and and and. And the, but I think we are moving uh, in the right direction, isn't it? Because people start becoming more aware how important is this, and and the, um, and the, <clears throat> and and now, for example, thinking about NIH. I mean, there are programs, for example, to and NIH is the National Institutes of Health. Exactly, it's, it's right. the main. Uh, funding institution uh, for the uh, United States and the money comes from federal funds. Mm -hmm. um, so the, and the, um, so now the, the, I mean, there is a, a little bit better uh, disposition, isn't it, to move in this direction uh, to try to support a lot of these, uh, uh, diseases, but I mean, it's a slow anyway. Um, so what I was going to mention, for example, like, a, I would say seven years ago or 10 years ago, uh, you went to the NIH and wanted to get funding uh, to study the connection between diabetes and brain and cognition. There was nothing there because of the diabetes, uh, people think, isn't it, is aspect of the body, isn't it, is, uh, and the and brain is very far away from the stomach or so the, but now I can tell you there are programs uh, to connect uh, diabetes uh, with brain function, for example, so that is funding. So as, that's, as I said, uh, things are moving slowly because the, the, um, I mean, people need to change their thinking. And uh, when we started working on exercise uh, and brain uh, more than 20 years ago, uh, no one wanted to believe that exercise would affect the brain because, uh, I mean, for everyone, exercise is, uh, is related to muscle activity, isn't it? Uh, just to the body, so the so it was very difficult to start uh, working on this. And but I mean, as I said, it's part of the system that uh, is a slow process. But I mean, it finally start opening up. And... Okay, all right. Final question: From all your years of research and all the papers you've authored and co-authored. From a big picture perspective, what's the big message, the big takeaway, the major conclusion you've come to from all your work regarding first diet and the brain, and then also the integration of exercise and diet with the brain? Yeah, as, as I said, the, I think for me, the most interesting has been uh, to learn more about the integration <clears throat> and, and, and I think the, to learn more uh, is not only one thing. Uh, and people still have the tendency to think about this. And, and, I, and I often get the question, uh, the people say, for example, if I eat well, so it means maybe I don't need to exercise. <laughs> so the people say, so they said they, so, 
so so people continue thinking some people continue thinking that the is one or the other isn't it and the and the but the what i learned uh, is is the whole is the whole picture isn't it is the is we need to do exercise we need to do good eating uh, we need to be happy we need to do uh, uh, to have a um, a very challenging uh, life in terms of mental activities and so and and the beauty of all of this uh, since uh, we study the molecular mechanisms uh, we are learning uh, that all of this uh, theory uh, actually they they have a some very strong bases, isn't it, in, in molecules, uh, in the brain and the body, and, 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 and it's everything together, isn't it, everything together, as I mentioned at the beginning, the, the circadian rhythms, isn't it, the circadian timing, uh, when to eat, when to exercise, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a whole spectrum of, of things uh, that are working. Uh, to affect uh, uh, our our uh, health uh, in terms of the mental and body function. Okay, so from what I gather, you're saying your learning or the big picture is really everything is related to everything else when it comes to the human body, the brain, physical activity, diet these kinds of things. Yeah, yes, yeah. Mm. Okay. Perfect. All right. Professor Fernando Gomez Panilla of the University of California at Los Angeles, thanks again for being with us on Up On Our Feet. Hey, thank you for having me.